Hello, everybody. Hello to all our followers, colleagues. I'm just here to do a test. <laughs> um, we had a, a recording this morning on Exquisite Magazine. This is crazy. Absolutely. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> I don't understand what's going on. I can't accept your request on mine on exquisite page. <laughs> but I can accept yours on mine. It's I don't understand. Weird. Hello, Telsin. Thank you for joining us. We are I am in Lagos, Nigeria. I'm waving at you. And um, welcome to Compass Global. I am with the editor-in-chief and publisher of Exquisite Magazine, which is one of Nigeria's leading lifestyle magazine. So we're here really to moan because we've just tried to do, um, hi, hello, hello, um, pause by Prissy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So since we can't connect on your platform, maybe you should... We're hosting you on your business program today. So you, <laughs> you take the lead and, you know, we're here. Uh, I'll answer any questions. Oh, my gosh. This is the most unbelievable thing ever. We've tried several times and it just, it's, it's not just it happening. It working, yes. Okay. okay so tell um, us about your program then. We're here, we'll listen. Oh my gosh. Okay, so <laughs> my name is Tewa Onosoya and um, this is supposed to be Behind the Business with Tewa Onosoya where we speak to business owners about their businesses and how their businesses solve people's challenge. And um, today we're meant to be talking about FLEC, which is the female leader's Female Leaders and Entrepreneur Conference happening on the, I think it's the 22nd to the 24th. Yeah. No, 20, 23rd to the 25th. 23rd. Yeah. Okay. 23rd to the 25th of March. And it's organized by Compass Global, whose platform we are on at the moment. <laughs> Exquisite Magazine is one of the media partners supporting the cause of empowering women. So this is a reverse order. <laughs> But we'll go ahead anyway, and afterwards, you save it on your platform. Hopefully, we will be able to download it and save it on and, and uh, post it on the Exquisite Magazine page as well. Fantastic. So like I said earlier, Behind the Business is basically about, to, you know, about speaking to the business owners, getting to know more about their businesses, and also getting to know more about the business owner as well. Because business owners are out there, you know, working hard to make sure that their businesses are solving a problem. And that is what Compass Global is doing. So mm -hmm. Compass Global, founded by Tokumba Cheju, <laughs> who, and who's also the CEO. I'm going to let you tell, tell us about Compass Global, and then we'll lead on from there. So we have a few questions, you know, very formal questions and informal questions as well that we're going to ask you today. So go ahead. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on our platform. Welcome, Talsin. Pause by Prissy. Cookie Farm Lagos joined us. Welcome. So my name is Tukumbo, CEO of Compass Global, founder of FLEC. So uh, Compass Global, we are a consultancy in the trade, investment, and export promotion space. And um, we do a lot of business development for companies that are looking for new markets. So this is really the core focus. Everything that we do, I would say, take the, takes the international box. You know, this is um, what 
I guess our superpower is to help businesses connect with markets and to give access to networks and to um, help business generally uh, grow and develop as they, as they take their journey. Um, in terms of myself, so I have a degree in law and social sciences. That's my first degree. Um, I have a master's in international development, which is why I have a very strong interest in um, business and also in um, nation building. Um, the Female Leaders and Entrepreneurs Conference is a brand that we created within our organization. It's about 14 years old. And basically, um, the focus of it, I, I believe I can just say that it has three pillars. And those three pillars are, uh, first, to promote toolkits to help businesses innovate, to promote toolkits to help businesses survive. And the third pillar is about sustainability. Um, the, the FLEC, as we like to call it, is the gender focus area of our work. Because we do a lot of business to business engagements, business linkages into new markets, we come across a lot of business owners in the course of the things that we do. Um, we run a number of B2B um, engagements such as exhibitions. We curate specific um, custom events for corporates, for government agencies. Um, and these um, activities are developed as a way of, you know, strategizing to help provide solutions to individual clients' requests. So uh, FLEC is our CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility. Um, about maybe 60% of our clientele are females. And since we're engaging a lot of female business owner, uh, owners, um, we felt it was important to be a platform where women can come to to find solutions and answers to whatever their uh, business uh, demands may be. So FLEC is a way of us engaging our clients and uh, providing a support system for businesses. Um, FLEC has three key elements. The first is it's a conference. Um, Within the conference, we have uh, specific masterclasses that we deliver as part of the entire program. Um, so in particular, we, we have what we call the help a, business, uh, uh, help a Business Succeed. We have the Habs brand within the FLEC platform. Um, it's, it's a workshop or a small um, what, you, what you may call a masterclass type of engagement, which is designed to help SMEs, you know. Uh, the second um, feature is that help a woman strategize. We call it HORS. The HORS masterclasses is actually um, what we do to help women in business or women in careers find solutions by bringing them in touch with somebody who is experienced in the industry, somebody who is walking the walk at the moment, and somebody who is able to bring experience. So we tend to do the HABs and the HORS workshops alongside the main platform of the conference. And this is what we're going to try and do this time around. I should also say that this is our first, um, this is our first virtual Thank event. You. This is our, our first uh, virtual event. Virtual event. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so we've <laughs> done this for so many years um, as an offline face-to-face -face activation. So it's a big deal for us, guys. We need all of you to come and be a part of it. Uh, Birds of China joined us. Hello, welcome. Uh, Mua Line NG, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I think it's Kuman. Welcome. I'm talking to you from Lagos, Nigeria. Um, and I'm with the uh, publisher and editor-in-chief of Exquisite Magazine, which is one of Nigeria's leading lifestyle and fashion magazine and business magazine for women. So, over yes. to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. So, you've given a very, very detailed introduction. And I'm sure people will want to know you know, yes, you provide your, um, the FLEC is, um, 
providing solutions to businesses. Do you want to cite a few examples of what solution that what solution can be um, can be expected, so to speak, and you know how coming to Flick will definitely definitely be a solution provider to whatever business needs they have. Can you cite some business challenges that you have solutions for? Okay, so um, this year we are looking at um, best practices in the post pandemic era. Um, Fleck is designed as a multi-sector platform, meaning that every business is our business. Every sector of business where women are located, where women are contributing, where women are thriving, uh, are our business, basically. So you know that um, we are in a very, very challenging period, um, which the world is trying to navigate. And there are so many lessons all over the world um, of how people are navigating through um, COVID-19, how they are pivoting, how they are building resilience. Um, so these are some of the things that are the key focus of FLEC 2020. One of the things that we were concerned about is the fact that women more than ever before are having to evolve in their roles. And I'll explain what I mean by that. The first thing to note is that women are at the, at the forefront of dealing with this pandemic. I'm not saying that we're the only ones affected by it. I'm saying that women have had to evolve their roles. You know, yeah. um, we are at the home front dealing with loved ones that may be suffering with the illness. We're at the same time caring for our children. We're at the same time working all within the home front. Um, all of this mm -hmm. is happening to us and we are expected not to drop the ball. We're expected to bring our genius as if nothing has happened. The reality is that COVID hasn't hit everybody equally. COVID hasn't hit men yeah. the same way it has hit women. We may be suffering together, but let's be clear about the fact that women are at the front line of this pandemic. So one of the mm. questions that, or the solutions, as you were asking me, one of the solutions that we are very concerned about at the very minute is, what is the support system available to women in this post-pandemic era? What is post-pandemic yeah. recovery? What does it look like for women? You know, what is female empowerment about now? What is gender development about now? Are we still talking about gender development the same way as in 2019 before the pandemic came? Because the world is not the same now. The Women same. are not mm -hmm. dealing with the same issues. Rather, we are dealing with the same issues plus. Yeah. So, so one of the big things that solutions that Fleck wants to bring about is knowledge that women should be empowered even now to understand what they can demand of their employers, what they can demand of their governments, what their rights are in this post-pandemic period. What period. So for example, you know, we're at home caring for our, our families and working at the same time. So imagine if, I, if I'm a female, you know, I'm a female professional, right? The demand mm. on me right now is tremendous. And I would want for my employers to understand that. I would want for my employers to provide me adequate support in the home to be able to deliver because we're all still working. So part of the thing that we wanted to do with FLEC 2020 is to speak to the powers that be, to go to the United Nations and say, what is the agenda for supporting empowerment of women or the empowerment of women across all spheres of society? So we're talking about women in the corporate world. We're talking about you, the female owner of a business. We're talking about women who are leading within organizations. So I'm talking about your entrepreneur, not your intrapreneur, not entrepreneurs only. So I'm not talking about the woman who is just running a home, her own business like you and I. I'm also talking about the women who are leading 
the transformation of businesses from within. So they're not working for themselves, they're working for organizations, but they are leaders within organizations. How best yeah. can they be supported? How best can you and mm -hmm. I be supported? Because we are here dealing with the pandemic, where small businesses, we have staff members who, whose livelihoods depend on what we do. Depend on it. Exactly. Yeah. What is our government doing? So the first thing that women can do for themselves right now is to be more aware. And you know how it is, knowledge is power. You cannot yeah. have knowledge if you, don't, if you don't have access to information. So one of the things mm -hmm. that we, we did with this event is we contacted the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. They are the paramount agency uh, charged with um, the issue of gender empowerment, not just raising awareness about balance, but investing in supporting our governments to be better equipped to support the women folk, whether they be business women, whether they be small scale businesses that are just trading, or whether they be women who are in careers. You know, UNECA has the mandate to support every African nation in their quest to be more to be more uh, to be more uh, balanced and to uh, be able to tackle the issue of gender inclusion. So um, we have um, a director from the UNECA talking to us on day one and sharing with us as women. You know, now we need to take responsibility for our own progress and not wait to be told or wait for your employers to tell you that this is what you're entitled to or wait yeah. to hear on the news that as a small business owner like yourself, you are entitled to this. We need to go in search of information. We need to be empowered with that knowledge. So one of the solutions yeah. that we are bringing to the table is knowledge. Just mm -hmm. breaking it down for everybody, empowering people to be aware and to be informed of what they need to do to be relevant because when you are dealing with the pandemic in the way that women have had to deal with it, I'm not talking from experience because I've had to homeschool my son for the better part of a year and I've been working at the same time, you know, so I've had to take on extra responsibilities because we can't, we were not able to come out and go into the office. And so yeah. some of the things that other people would do for us, we've had to do for ourselves. And I can tell you that it, that wasn't easy to do. That was challenging for me. So mm -hmm. uh, the point of the matter is, in as much as all of these um, new evolving of our roles are happening, we must remain relevant. We can't be swallowed up. We can't say yeah. oh, we didn't know or we didn't have access to this information or um, somehow when, when we were given the information, we weren't there to receive it, you know, because mm -hmm. that's, very, that's very possible. There's a lot going on. And you see, if yeah. we don't have information, we cannot be proactive and we cannot exactly. um, do exactly. the things that we're really able to do. So solution, uh, solutions or answers to problems around the pandemic, problems around um, the pressure that we are all facing as business owners. That's the first one. The second one is if you're a professional woman, you know, how do you stay on top of your game? How do you still bring the best of yourself mm -hmm. given your new roles? Um, the second thing that we want to, we want to be able to talk about is the issue of women and corporate governance more than ever before because we're dealing with a pandemic. We need to have more women represented in key decision-making roles. The women need to feel empowered to be part of the conversations that are deciding our future. So we want to talk yep. about how do you navigate the challenges of this pandemic and still thrive in whatever mm. sphere you find yourself, whether you own your own business or whether you are working as a professional woman. Um, then the third thing that we want to look at is technology. We're looking at the way in which dig digital technology is transforming our world right now. You know, um, if we didn't have technology, 
I don't know how we would have coped with COVID because literally technology proved itself in a new way to us. So much so now yeah. that a lot more people have respect for, te for tech people mm -hmm. and solutions. Mm -hmm. So, but the thing that we want to do this year on our platform is to find the women who are technologists to find the African women, wherever they are, who are part of developing solutions. And I'm so excited because we have a contingent, a contingent from Kenya. We have some of the most dynamic young Africans who are doing mm. amazing things in health, in agriculture, in telecommunications, in fintech. We, we are hosting some of them. In fact, you are moderating a session of women in tech from Kenya, Ghana, and from Tanzania. One of the things that we can celebrate about COVID is that it has brought the world closer together. Now, yeah. I, don't need, I don't need to get on the plane to go find somebody that I'm looking for. I will find them in Clubhouse, find them on Zoom, find them on Insta Live, find them on YouTube. So, you know, we want to look at how can we encourage more women to be involved in technology? Since technology is defining our future, most importantly, how do we ensure that in education, our young girls, our children have access, equal access to mm. sciences, technology, engineering, and math subjects? How do, we, how do we ensure that our children have equal opportunity when it comes to accessing education that can help them become technologists? Otherwise, what we're going to have is a situation where the men are deciding the solutions. Yeah. You know, and then it's yeah. not balanced. I'm not saying that we're anti-men. No, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that it would be good for women to also be at the helm of creating solutions, inventing. Yeah, definitely. Yes, definitely. Inventing. And I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. And so, I agree with you because, I mean, if decisions are being made about women, women need to be at the helm of affairs as well. And, you know, be at the table where we're talking about how, you know, economics, the politics of things, social, you know, the social aspects of things, how it affects women. We do need to be there. Thank you very much. So I'd like to know, we've got three days of, you know, Women Empowerment Conference. Can you tell us some of the topics that will be discussed and some of the speakers? I know you did mention some of the speakers from different countries in Africa. Can you give us a bit more insight into the topics we're going to be, you know, we're going to be discussing and the people that are going to be discussing these topics. Okay, so day one is um, really about the theme gender development and innovation. So we both agree that these are two key elements that are important to us as women in business, women in careers, because it's really about where we are going to be in the world, how you and I are going to be visible in terms of the things yeah. that we are doing, what we are contributing to the ecosystem in terms of solutions to the world. So um, day one is about the big issues, the issues that affect women, the issues that women feel limited by. So on that day, we have Ngone Diop, who is... Um, the director for the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. She is in charge of 15 African countries and she's leading the agenda for women empowerment and gender development in those 15 countries along the, the governments of those nations. And I'd like to think that Nigeria is one of those nations. In fact, I know that Nigeria is one of those nations. So I want yeah. to ask some questions. I want to understand what support our government is being given so that when I need to demand my right of government, I can ask the right questions. Or if, mm. we're, not, if we're not seeing certain things happening, we can also be a voice uh, to lobby and to ask, you know, institutions that are supporting women to please look at certain issues in a way that would favor our agenda for a more balanced world. So 
Day one is about the big issue. Day one is also about trade because during the pandemic, a lot of small businesses suffered. And this is because the global uh, supply chain almost came to a halt when there were no flights, logistics were difficult. A lot of small businesses became very, very stuck because they didn't have resources. So as a result mm. of that, we are now playing catch up. Yes, logistics are back on, the, the planes are flying now, but what about almost a year of, almost, of not being in business? You know, how do we make up for that? How do we um, help small businesses catch up? So for this, we have gone to the International Trade Center, which is an arm of the, the World Trade Organization. Their focus and their remit is to ensure that nobody is left behind when it comes to trade, especially SMEs yeah. and especially women in business. So if you're a woman in business, there is a lot of support out there for you. But if you don't mm. have information, it's going to be really difficult, to be honest, for you to survive, yeah. never mind playing bigger because right now with the pandemic there are a lot of opportunities out there um mm -hmm. but because everybody is trying to still steady themselves and people are trying to pivot and people are on learning and relearning different things because the situation is very different and i can give you a clear example the event and travel uh, sector were massively yeah. affected by covid it is not business mm -hmm. as usual in those sectors. People have lost a lot of money. Some businesses are really finding it difficult to survive, never mind thrive. So how mm -hmm. do we gain support for these sorts of businesses? Where can they go for help? What are the, you know, right now everybody's talking about re resilience. But the fact is that some small businesses don't even have the tools to... Yeah you know, to pivot. They don't have the resources. But, you know, if you have access to information, that can be a very, very significant part of the step that you need to take forward. So it could be that, you know, maybe Exquisite Magazine has, is you know, because I know you've been helping businesses for quite a number of months now with a lot of budget, um, budget advertising packages where they can advertise on your platform because you have a lot of followers I know that you've been doing a lot of different things but imagine if i didn't have access to that information am i going to be able to take part in that no mm -hmm. so a lot of, a lot of what we need to address about the the challenges that we're facing is lack of information lack information. of access to information the information gap when it comes to what you yeah. can what you can access as a woman in business. So if you come to FLEC 2020, we have the UNECA, um, which, like I said, is an arm of the UN, which is all about women, women empowerment. You know, that's their focus. They want women, women in business to thrive and women in careers to thrive. They want women to mm. be involved in the decision making, in driving uh, business and driving transformation and um, yeah. also one of the things that i am very excited about and which is which i want everybody to be aware of if they're not already aware of it is the africa free trade uh free africa continental free trade agreement which is like um you know, in the European Union, in the what they had in the European Union, where they had the EU and there was free trade, we are now going into that on the continent. Which means that Exquisite Magazine could do business with another business owner in Namibia, free of um, duty, free trade. Mm. So free trade is something the African Free Continental Trade Agreement became effective as of January. And it's something that is bringing new opportunities. It's literally opening up the borders and it's creating an incentive for you to want to do business with your fellow Africans. It is removing barriers, you know. And this is also a big issue now because a significant number of businesses are owned by women. So if the women don't position themselves, it's going to be problematic for their growth.
and for their relevance. So day one is really about the big issues. It's about the big issues. It's about the issues that are determining the future of women, whether as career women or as business owners. So I encourage everybody to join that conversation. Um, it's something that would benefit everyone who is on their own and everybody who is equally working within organizations because we need more women at the top. And so on, the, um, on day one, we have somebody, we have Aisa to Diallo, who is the point woman for the African Free Continental Trade Agreement. She is the person who is in charge of that and driving that agenda um, for the African nations. And so she is in a better position to tell us where the trajectory is for growth and for, for opportunities as well for us to to amplify the work that we're doing. You know, so you mm -hmm. are doing well in Nigeria. I'm doing very well here in Nigeria. We have access to other markets like in, in Europe and in America. Uh, but how much ground have we broken on this continent where there are so many opportunities? And this is what the African Free uh, Continental Trade Agreement has come to do, to open up the borders and open up the doors for business and to connect Africa in a much more firm way through commerce. Uh, so we have her. We also have the president of the Lagos uh, Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Uh, the Lagos uh, Chamber are the oldest chamber in West Africa. So they've been going for a very long time. Um, the other thing is that they are a strong voice for the private sector. You know, so they are constantly lobbying governments. And um, for the third time, I think for the third time, they have a female president. I am very excited about that because again, we're talking about having women at the helm of affairs. The helm um, of things. We're, yes, we're talking about corporate governance. We're talking about, you know, how this is so important for diversity and inclusion. And uh, she yeah. herself, um, Mrs. Toki Mabogunje, she has been in the business of supporting SMEs for over 25 years. And uh, actually cuts across uh, the different uh, continents of the world. And so every woman who is talking on day one is bringing something quite profound in terms of their experience and their expertise as a qualified person in the space where they are actually operating in. Then we also have um, Mrs. Fumi uh, Shofeku, who is a um, women on board champion and has been listed in the top in the list of top 50 females who are championing um, diversity and inclusion of women um, in the area of corporate governance. She is based in the UK and she has tremendous experience um, under her. And really, we want to amplify this issue and to let every woman who is maybe a small manager in some bank or some insurance company understand that it can be more than this. And there is a way that you can go about your professional development. Um, whilst yeah. working in this particular role, you may not be in a very high position at the moment, but there is a way that you can bring what you have, your contribution, that can position you and really help you chart the course towards the profession of your career, you know. Mm -hmm. um, on the same day, we have Dr. Ibiene Ogolo. Uh, she was the former chief um, operating officer for the Eco Development Company. They are the developers of the Eco Atlantic, you know, the new city that is built on the, uh, on the Victoria Island axis of Lagos. And for me, she, yeah. is, she is a bright, bright woman. She's an engineer. Uh, she's a woman who has a, her background in computer, engine, computer science and engineering. And then she went, she went into luxury real estate and construction. And she's, she's a woman who is used to being in spaces where mostly you find men. And that's one of the reasons why we brought her 
into uh, day one of the conference because not only is uh, was she on that project, which was attempting to build a kind of Dubai in Lagos, she was also a woman dealing with peers in the construction industry who are in real estate who are males. And, you know, I want to find out how, how was that for you? How did you navigate that? And how were you able to still bring yourself and bring what you had to the table? So day one is yeah. really, really action-packed. Ah. Yes, it, it, it really is. And like I said before, day two is all about tech. So we're talking about, yeah. we're talking to women on day two that have won investors over by their ideas to the point where they, they've been given thousands of dollars for their idea. Um, we're talking about women in, we're talking about women, young women, millennials in fintech. Uh, we're talking about women in agri-tech, women in health tech. We're also looking at the real, uh, the, 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 the side of education, um, looking at early years education, how that needs right. to be designed to be more inclusive so that our girl children are not dissuaded or put off by the way that education is presented to them. You understand what I'm saying? So day two is all about case studies and hearing from these young ladies, these young female leaders, how it was that they were able to make it in a very male dominated space. And not only did mm -hmm. they make it, they are winning. They are winning and we want to, to learn from them and to, to hear more about how we can also replicate that in our own area of work. Um, yeah. Day three is about thought leadership. You know, we've been hearing a lot about people thriving in the pandemic. I mean, I've always said that the pandemic is like the five fingers of our hands. It's hit everybody quite unequally because if you look at the unequally. five fingers they're not equal so mm -hmm. some people are complaining that the pandemic has been challenging for them it's been uh, very difficult for them to uh, sort of do the normal things and that's understandable it's it's a very unusual time but as we are saying this there are people who did very well in the pandemic the question is what is the difference between those who found it really difficult and those who are still thriving and uh, mm -hmm. when you when you ask um, anyone who is in that position one of the things that everybody says is the ability to think differently the ability to uh, to demonstrate thought leadership thought leadership is about being able to um, carry people along, being able yeah. to provide answers when really it is difficult for the answers to be found, mm -hmm. being courageous. The people who are making it in this pandemic are those that are demonstrating innovativeness, thought leadership, and real courage. You know, um, so we are on the third day looking really at post-pandemic recovery and best practices. We have, especially as it affects lifestyle. So the third mm. day is our lifestyle day. It's the day when we look at health. What is the way now that we need to navigate the pandemic? Bearing, being mindful of our health, being mindful of our mental health, our physical health, the health of our loved ones. How do yeah. we do travel now? How do we um, access products? Because, you know, we talked about the global su supply chain and how difficult it is even now to get raw materials. So mm. the things that we were able to get before quite easily are not that easy to get now because manufacturers are having problems, you know. Yeah. So, so how do we live life normally in in an abnormal new <laughs> in a new normal you know so when in a new normal i won't call yes. it abnormal a new yes, normal <laughs> in a new in a new normal in a new normal so you yes. know so we're looking at lifestyle issues we're looking at mental health health in itself we're looking at travel we're looking at the luxury industry we're looking at examples yeah. of real innovative um, entrepreneurs that are able to turn this on its head. 
and are able to chart a new course for them. <coughs> so um, mm. day three really is about um, women who are doing all of the great things that we all want to be doing regardless of whether there is a pandemic. The question is, how are they thriving? What can we yeah. learn from them? What learn. can we unlearn mm -hmm. from what we're doing now that is not quite working? So day three yeah. is about thought leadership, innovation, and brands. So expect to see a lot of brands, expect to hear a lot of stories from people in fashion, in lifestyle, in luxury travel, um, people in, um, in wellness you know, talking about caring for people in a time of great stress. Mm. What is wellness now? How is wellness doing? And how should we consume wellness now? Wellness. You know? um, the other thing we're looking at is mental health. People are under a lot of um, pressure now. Pressure. So how do you recognize the sign of pressure? And how do you support yeah. your loved ones? How do you, how do you support your friends who may be yeah. very challenged with COVID? And you know, yeah. the challenge is not really all about the same thing. Your challenge might be different from mine. You know, so there are some people who were challenged with just not being confi confined, not being able mm. to go out was a real problem for some people, you know, yeah. because it, it was new to them. And, you know, some people prefer to be out and about. And while some people are, are okay with sitting at home. So the fact mm -hmm. is, you know, um, the new normal is impacting everybody differently. So we want to be more, yeah, be more aware. We want to be more aware of the signs, especially when somebody is not doing really well. And how can you support yeah. them? So the third day is going yeah. to be very interesting. It's going to be very... Um, interactive and uh, topical right it's um it sounds like a very very power packed full three days of you know just getting to know more about how to move businesses forward how to continue the conversation and not just continue the conversation but also taking action on whatever conversations that are going to be had thank you so much for that detailed information and we're looking forward to hearing all the speakers speak and also, you know, advancing ourselves and moving forward. So just to quickly round off, can you give us more in, in terms of free, but let people know where to register, contact details, website address, Instagram handle, the camera's turned. <laughs> the camera turned. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all the details for registration, if you can share that. And um, if you don't mind typing the, um, the website so people can click on it. Or, you know, I'm sure there are details on the, via the link in your bio as well. But yes. yeah, final word, <clears throat> final word on registering. Okay, so on, to register, it's quite simple. It's a virtual event um, and we'll do our best to make you feel welcome. You should go check it out. Um, if you just type FLEC, F-L-E-C uh, 2021 into Google, it will take you straight into uh, the link for the virtual platform. Otherwise, you can just click the link in our bio, um, which will take you straight through to register for the event. Uh, please tell your friends about it. It's going to be transformational. Um, yes. I love so that word. Yes, it's going to be transformational. transformational. I am looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to... Um, I've, we've already been challenged by one of the, um, the women in tech speakers. Uh, she said she wants to challenge the older generation to be more tech savvy. So okay. this is the era of digital technology. And it has to be mm -hmm. beyond using Instagram and uh, using YouTube and all of those things. We need to connect our ideas with technology. Technology yeah. has to drive whatever the idea is. This is how we can reach the ends of the earth. Not by just mm -hmm. sort of having a good idea that nobody knows about. We have to really be more curious about 
digital technology in terms of how it can transform our day-to-day -day and our business ideas, how it can just basically yeah. translate it to another level, you know. Yeah. Um, so Perfect. I am looking forward to this conference myself. <laughs> fabulous, fabulous, and well done, well done, well done. I mean, you've been going on for the past 14 years. It's not... Um, it's not, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not you good. have done well. <laughs> exactly, exactly. As so we well done, Nigeria. well done. As you say in Nigeria, well done. Yeah. yeah, so we are looking forward to a great event. Um, I've always been saying from last year that the women are here. So it's not that the women is, are coming. It's not the future is women. No, the future is here and now. The women are here. So let's register for FLEC 2021. Let's, you know, take on all this knowledge and not just only taking on the knowledge, but also applying the knowledge as well. Because it's time for the women to rise and rise higher and not just rising by themselves, but pulling other Together. women you know, with them as well. So I look forward to seeing everyone at FLEC 2021. And um, thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, for coming on behind energy. the business. <laughs> yes, thank you, Bam Bam Onems. Thank you, Udunu GLA. And uh, yes, thank you, Exquisite Magazine. Thank you for staying with us. Thank you for supporting us, Exquisite Magazine. And You're thank welcome. you for making this work. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. So please save the video. So you can save it on your feed, and then we will copy it on your feed to put it on our feed. All right, no problem. We'll do yeah. that. Since technology decided to be smart today. <laughs> well, we still won. We still won. Exactly. Exactly. Still won. So have a great day. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>